Hey, back again. So I really just had a block there and uh, I uh, ended up just uh, ending that previous video and there's another one behind it. I'm not sure which one's gonna come out first, but uh, anyway, there are three videos in succession and they'll make sense, I guess, if you, I don't know how they're gonna come out. You're working, God has to work with somebody with limited technical ability and uh, limited resources, so. But it's the message, not the person, and it's God's message that matters. But anyway, there is something that he brought me back as soon as I started to walk down uh, the road. And, uh, you know, I said, Lord, I just empty myself here. I don't even remember what it was that you wanted to say. And then he began to bring it back. And then all of a sudden, uh, when I got out of the way, he just brought it back. So this is what was really cool today. And uh, this is very, very important. If you don't hear anything else in this, please hear this. You know, the um, Old Testament Israelites uh, were marching to the Promised Land and they were released from bondage. Uh, God uh, took them out of bondage and they followed Moses uh, and the Lord. And, uh, you know, uh, it took a, a second generation to finally get into the Promised Land. And, you know, God wants us to understand some things in all of this that our Promised Land is um, ahead of us. Um, in eternity residing with him forever that's one uh, a promised land can also be a vision or place that uh, God is taking us in our own walk with him in our own life his plan and his purpose for us that could be there too but one thing about that is the vision and the season that God has you in today may not be the same one tomorrow now I'm gonna tell you honestly personally is the Lord has been surrounding me uh, the last two or three days with these words saying we're going to take a little shift here. It may not look exactly what, uh, like what you thought before. So be open because I want to give you something new for this next season. So I asked him this afternoon and he hasn't done that yet. But I need to commit myself to just sit before him and commit my time with him and just say, Okay, Lord, show me what it is that you want to uh, for this next steps that you want me to take. And I think it's really important, especially when he's given me this vision of a little baby right now or a child that takes a hold of their father's hand and says, and he's just or she's just learning to walk. You know, we have to start out with the Lord as a baby. There comes a time later on when, just like a baby, we begin to uh, move, crawl, roll over, that kind of thing. And then we begin to crawl along and uh, then we take our stand and we take first steps. And then there's always a progression in our journey with the Lord uh, in the season that we're in. And so this is something new for me. But one thing we have to hear, and this just blew my mind today, it came as a revelation, a download in worship today and in the service, is the Lord says this, and he brought back Toby Mac's song, Promised Land. You see, I think we don't realize, and I certainly didn't till today, that Jesus really is our promised land. You know, we're always uh, trying to get somewhere and trying to, uh, we always look for the destination. And I have been the one to do that probably ever since I became a Christian. And sometimes my frustration comes in the fact like, God, I feel like I just never get there, you know? And it keeps changing and it's gonna keep changing. So now I understand what he was saying and it's this. He said to me, River, he said, I am your promised land. And I'm the promised land back there. I'm the promised land for you today. And I'm the promised land for you tomorrow and for eternity. And I went, huh? I don't quite get that. And he said, because I'm with you. He said, I am your promised land. Everything that you ever had, have, will have, anything that you desire, I am. That's my name. I am. And because I am with you and I am that I am. I am your promised land. And I went, oh my gosh. And I don't know if you're getting this revelation, but I just get it. He's like, you know, we're so busy trying to get to a place. It's kind of like, uh, let's say we're going to go on vacation with our family. And we've been planning this for years. And now we have the money. We have the time off. Uh, the kids are old enough. We have the ability. It's exciting. We know this is going to be great. So we get in the car and we drive a far, far distance to get to a place that we think is going to be wonderful and I'm not saying that it isn't but a lot of times even when we get to that destination it's not quite what we thought and it's not all so filling or satisfying as we thought it would be and there's always someplace else to go after 
So what the Lord is saying is that he is our promised land and just journeying through this life with him and gleaning everything there is to learn from him and uh, being transformed by the renewing of our mind, um, being transformed from the inside out, becoming more and more like Jesus as we behold him and spend time with him and in the word. You know, we really walk with him and every day really is a promised land because there's something good in every day. There's some treasure in all this darkness that we can take away from today. And you know, uh, I saw this, I was started to watch the message on ele uh, elevation when I got home and I didn't have to watch it all because it was the same message. But one thing I did see and I thought was cool was the word grateful, but it was GR, the figure eight, and then T, uh, E-F-U-L or something like that or anyway but you know it really makes me be more grateful or I feel more grateful because of what the Lord said that he is my promised land and that wherever I go and he is there's really life and abundance and full supply protection everything we need so I mean that in itself is my excitement that in myself that he is with me that I have everything I need in my good shepherd Jesus Christ that's everything it's all I need. And uh, now it does, I got to say, although I want to be faithful to whatever God puts in front of me that he gives my hand to do, uh, whatever his um, plan and purpose is for me in this uh, season of my life and for the rest of my life, um, as long as I get to do it with him, that's all I really need. And uh, he really is all I need. And uh, I'm learning that more and more. You know, I don't know about you when I'm going to end with this is that Sometimes we can think, just like the woman at the well, that a relationship is going to satisfy us completely, that if I have a bigger house, if I have these material things, if I go to this church, if I wear these clothes, if I do this, this, and this, if I have a big family, if we have our health, and we just, the list is never ending of what we think will bring us complete and full satisfaction. And there is nothing in this life that is actually going to do that. Everything that I just said can bring us a measure of happiness or a measure of joy and a measure of satisfaction and fullness. But it's never, ever, that comes a bike. It's never, ever, ever going to be uh, the fullness of what we think it's going to be. Jesus is the only one that can be that in our lives. And the Father and the Holy Spirit, our relationship with God is the only thing that can bring us that fullness of joy and that is our promised land even in the right here and the right now. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.